Well, I think he's, he, you know, he's always had a strong arm. He's, he's very um, elusive in the pocket. You know, he's a good athlete. He can run. Uh, played against him a couple different times, and you know, if he he gets rolling, he can he can get it rolling. He can spin the ball. So, um, but I, I just. I mean, he's a good quarterback. He's an NFL quarterback. If he's an NFL quarterback, he's a good quarterback. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I know what everybody wants to say, well, he's not Wilson. Well, he's got a pretty good group of guys around him. He's got really, really talented running backs. He's got great wide receivers. He's a good quarterback, and he's proven that in this league. I have no idea what that means. Ask Coach Pete. Well, he said he's going to throw the ball down the field. Yeah, sure. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm sure he is. He's also said we need to run the ball better. If I notice both of those quotes. So okay, which okay. which quote is true? I don't know. Uh-huh. Okay. And then, um, uh, thanks for the help there. Uh, and uh, the uh, rotation in secondary, how's that? How'd y'all arrive at that and how'd that work? Really wasn't, it really wasn't a rotation. Okay. Uh, it really wasn't. Uh, <clears throat> when they went up 28, uh, whatever it was, it was 3 or 10 or whatever it was, um, I just turned to Coach Oak and said, why don't you put Dean in? And it's 28 to 3. At some point in time, you're going to need all these guys during the season, right? So the more, and he's played quite a bit, and, and but he hadn't played in our system as much. So we just put him in. It wasn't had, had nothing to do with Hawk, had nothing to do with any of those guys, other than it was 28 to 3. And I felt like, okay, let's, let's play the other guys. There's not like I think there's a big drop off in any of those guys. I don't think there is. So it really didn't matter to me. It wasn't. It was not taking a guy out of the game for any reason. It was just putting the other guy in to, to give him some playing time. Eric played more nickel. It looked like. Then- yeah, it felt like in that game there was a there was a lot of stuff we were doing, and it was a little more complicated coverage wise. And I just felt like again it was not anything to do with Michael Ford. It had more to do with just Eric's experience as a safety and as a defensive back in a game like that that I thought could really help us. You talked last week about the relationship between Richie and Eric and, and Dean, but when Richie and Eric specifically, is that something that you try to foster in the locker room or do those things just have to happen organically? Well, no, I think, you know, you, I think you have a hard time as a coach trying to foster relationships right. between players. The thing that what you can foster is bringing guys back into the program that you know will foster guys like that and that can also accept roles as maybe not being the starter. There's, there's a lot of guys that were starters in this league, and if you try to bring them back as a backup, that's really – they're not looking to foster anybody. They're looking to beat the guy out and keep their job. Eric and Dean are two guys that, yes, do they want to start? Do they want to – play yes but they also are the type of guys that you know are going to be good for the younger guys too because they will help them any way they possibly can I mean all these guys are in competition with each other and it takes a special guy to be able to mentor somebody that's in their position and those those guys are special guys and uh, I give credit to Arthur and Terry for bringing bringing Eric back in that role and bringing in Dean Marlott Well, if we could somehow put the first three quarters of the first game and the fourth quarter of the last game together, that's what we're looking for. Basically, uh, we played really well, I thought, for three quarters, except for two plays by Hill in the Saints game. And then this last game, we just got ourselves down. But I thought we showed uh, resilience and came back second half. And and even when we were down, played hard and gave ourselves a chance to win the game at the end. I mean, it was close. I mean, we didn't give up. Guys were playing hard in the fourth quarter, got them off the field finally in the fourth quarter. We did just played better fundamentally. And and what we got to do is we got to find that personality inside us. Like in the first half of the Saints game, I thought we played loose, free, not worried about anything, turn it loose, let's go. And we played like that. And then all of a sudden we tightened up a little bit in that fourth quarter in the Saints game and didn't play fundamentally like we did for three quarters. And then this last game, then all of a sudden it goes kind of the other way and you're down 28 to three. So now 
all that's aside, now it's not like we're playing in a real tight game. So now all of a sudden we're playing freer and looser, and I thought we played better. So what we got to do is figure out how we can get ourselves to play loose for four quarters and just let the thing go. Arthur was talking earlier in the week about feeling different at 0-2 this year than feeling at 0-2 oh, last year. No doubt. Oh, I can just tell the difference in the way we play, the style we're playing with, the way we practice. No, no doubt about it. And it isn't even close to me on defense. What, what else kind of points to that? I mean, the, you talk about the way you play, the way that you practice. Players. It is players. It's, it's the way they practice. It's the way they, you know, get themselves ready to go. I mean, we're playing the same scheme. We're added a few things here and there and stuff like that. But it, it's their attitude. It's it, this game's all about players. He did all right. He did all right. Some of the rookies had, you know, there's always going to be growing pains and stuff like that. But I thought, you know, for his first start out there and kind of in the heat of the battle and away and all that kind of stuff, you know, I thought he, I thought he did well. He's he's same thing as all those rookies. They, you know, and and Coach Smith always points it out to him. You know, we want you to play like you looked when we drafted you, because what happens is that they come in there and they start thinking too much. You know, they're used to the system they are in college. And all of a sudden they're playing freer and they're going to the, you know, when they go down there to the bowl games like the senior bowl and stuff like that, they don't have them doing a whole lot. I mean, it's just line up and sick them and, and, you know, they play that way and that's what gets them drafted. Well, we got to get you back to doing that all the time. And I, but he, but he had a good first start. Yeah, we're just, again, we're trying. That had nothing to do with Rashawn Evans whatsoever. Uh, that was just a matter of let's let's get him some snaps, get him some snaps when it counts. You know, I mean, it was like the second quarter, so it was like, you know, I don't know if it was 14 to three or seven to three when we put him in, but kind of wanted to get him some significant snaps when everything's kind of still fresh. It's not lopsided or anything like that, one way or the other. Well, I think you guys feel good that we've had some turnovers in the first two games. We've had, we didn't get any sacks in this game. We got some sacks in the first game. So we've, we've shown progress in that area. Cause you know, last year at the end of the year, I don't know what we have 15 sacks for the year. And I don't even know how many takeaways we had, but all those things really help our psyche, which to me, that's, that's kind of right now is where it is. I know we're inexperienced at some positions, which just going to get better and better, but it's also, it's, it's just our attitude, and that's like you asked me, Tori. It's, it's that's why I feel just so different about this defense. I just I feel good about these guys. I do. Oh yeah, he's one of my mentors. Um, one of the reasons why I coach special teams is because of Joe D. I interned for him uh, when I was with the Chicago Bears when he was the special teams coordinator in 13 and 14. So there's a huge reason why he's one of the reasons why I coach special teams. Yes, amazing guy. What's your, what's the memories you have with him? Man, I was a defensive line coach at the time, 2013 at University of South Dakota, and it was the very first Bill Walsh uh, fellowship pro, uh, program I was part of with the Chicago Bears. So it was cool just learning the different ways on how he taught personnel, um, concepts, teaching, um, a lot of the core things that I do on special teams and from teaching roots back to when I was with him back in 13 and 14. So um, I really admire the way he coaches the game and how he gets guys to play really hard. New career, uh, tell me about making a play in special teams like you guys made last week. Mm -hmm. Is that a lot like turnovers that can kind of grow? All of a sudden guys see credibility in what they're trying to do. Do you need some of those kind of plays to make that kind of manifest itself in the extra time? Yes, I mean, you look at the game of uh, special teams, 40 or more yards being exchanged, a direct attempt to put up points, and a change of possession. So anytime there's a big play made on special teams, it helps the offense and defense, you know, whether it comes to field position or putting up points on the board. So those, those plays are big. And we talk to our guys, guys like, you know, Cordell Hodge, just as walking by right now, we say great plays are made from great effort. And there's a reason why those guys are out there playing. We try to put the best loving out there. But plays on special teams, if you're able to make a play in space when it comes to playing the special teams game or being able to get a hand or, or a stomach on the ball like Troy did, uh, those are momentum changing plays. Does that help you continue to coach? And I talk about credibility, but 
Mm -hmm. You need to have some success, have some plays go your way. Yeah. If you get something like that, all of a sudden, more guys want to make plays out of the season, right? Yes, Dave, when it comes to that, when you're playing in space and you get the opportunity, one, it goes to guys just doing their job. Once they do their job and they're able to put themselves in a position, now it's up to them to go make that play. And it provides credibility. And then those are opportunities for guys to lead by example, by their play and their actions and their production on the field, Dave. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, Coach, I've got uh, Crawford, um, Lockett and Dallas that they're returning for Seattle to this last game. Mm -hmm. Just like any other week, our kick and coverage have to complement each other when it comes to the coverage game, D-Led. Being able to you know, put the ball where we need to put it at, getting our coverage guys to strain in coverage, get off blocks, and finish on the football with leverage and attack the football. So it's like any other week, it's the NFL. There's always dynamic returners that we go against each and every week, and it's, it's our job, the 11 guys that are on the field, to be able to, one, put the ball where we need to put it, to when it comes to coverage and kick placement, and then our guys getting off blocks and making plays. And uh, the, the tacklers were Nick Bloor and uh, Daryl Johnson. Are they uh, some of the top special teams guys regularly? They have a lot of top special teams guys when it comes to Seattle special teams. I really admire what Coach Izzo's doing there. They're a direct reflection of how they, how he was as a special teamer in the NFL. You know, nine-time All-Pro special teams player, Pro Bowl player, and it's cool to see how he's coaching those guys, and it's a direct reflection of how they're playing the game. They're fast, physical, aggressive, and they really complement their offense and defense, D-Led. And Myers, the kicker, and uh, Dixon, the punter, any special, um, you know, range or traits for those two? They're, both of them, both were pro bowlers in, you know, a couple, like, you know, Dixon was, I think, the 18 season, he was pro bowler. Myers, pro bowler, 20 season. Both. Both guys are very talented, but both have very strong legs. And you can tell that they really do a great job of one, putting up points or flipping the field when it comes to their coverage units. Let's talk about the ability to communicate in this building that you're going to play in, mm -hmm. especially in punt protection, some of those kind of things where you have to put protection. Yeah. Talk about that and who's responsible for that. You know, when it comes to Pump Pro, is our personal protector, and as everybody is correlated to our protection, we want to make sure that we over communicate and that we're clear with whatever we're doing, whether it's Keith Smith out there, part of our Pump Pro, Eric, Eric Harris, if Cordell Patterson wants to get back out there and play the gunner position. Hint, hint, just messing with them right now. But those those positions, everybody is part of our pump pro. They got to over communicate and make sure we're all on the same page. We want to take our time to make sure that we're clear and concise with what we're doing. And then we're doing a good job of protecting Pinion so he could go out there and do his job and put the ball where it needs to be. I know you try to be consistent with the message, but is this week magnified because of the building you're playing? And this is one of the more difficult environments communication-wise. I mean, we got, you want to, there is a, we're not going to be naive. There is awareness to it but we're not going to allow the external change who we are internally and what we, how we go about our business. We get to play on a 100-yard football field and it has two field goal posts and there's one football. So we go out there and we do our job at the highest level possible and we make sure that we're complimenting each other on all phases and it doesn't matter, then we'll love the outcome of the game. How many special teams did Richie Graham play, play for you last year? I mean, he's a four-phase player for us. You know, he played, I mean, he's one of our better special teams players. You know, the two rookies that we, that played a lot for us was Avery Williams and Richie Grant when it came to special teams. He was frustrated with himself a little bit that he wasn't getting more defensive snaps. Did you ever see that carry over to his special teams? No, play or never, he... never. I never saw that, Josh. The, the, the guy's awesome. Yeah, of course, every guy that is a, a player that plays on defense or a player that plays on offense, that's their goal to be a starter on that right. side of the ball. But he did a great job last year when it came to special teams. He, him and guys like Avery, they would come to my office every Monday and Tuesday during the season and make sure that they were dialed in on what they needed to do for special teams because they knew that him being a part of coverage games, which he was one of our top tacklers on kickoff, correlated to us having great field position on defense. He was never – you could have your frustrations, but it never – bled into what he did on defense and it bled and never bled into what he did on special teams and that speaks high about his characteristics you say he's awesome why other, other than that mindset what else makes it he's a competitor he's ultimate like competitor he's a competitor he's physical positive attitude um, he's a leader he leads by example and he works hard he I mean his urgency on the field and the way he goes about his business and he, again I would say the top thing he's a competitor whether he's he might be outmatched sometimes going against a bigger opponent but he he wants to line back up and go against that guy again. And every single play, he might lose a rep, but the next one, I, I put money that he's going to win the next rep. Coach, 
how did he and Malone do on special teams for your, uh, last week? He was very solid for us, and he continues to get better, as long with all these other rookies that we out there playing and other guys, the young players that are playing for us. He continues to get better. He's physical, aggressive, fast. Give him a compliment because he set up that rush, too, by his alignment and his rush to help okay. free up Troy Anderson. Mm -hmm. and I, I have some notes from old games from, from uh, I would like to see those if you get a chance. Those are, yeah, dude, you know, those are conversations that we have with our specialists and the head coach and myself. And when we get to it, any time we play at a stadium that's outdoors, we want to use, I said this before in one of my press conferences, we want to use the win to our advantage. So this, is a comp this conversation that we have with Koo, Bradley, Liam, um, Coach Hoff and Coach Smith and myself, we have those conversations on how we can make the win that day a factor and help us complement us on all six phases. Oh, I mean, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, obviously, when you design things, uh, predicating what you think the defense is going to do, uh, there's times where obviously defenses take certain reads away and the ball goes where the ball goes in terms of the progression for the quarterback. So Kyle is doing everything we ask. Um, obviously, within the scheme and the fit of the games, uh, trying to get him involved is obviously important for all of us. But there's other players that obviously uh, have shown up, made plays. Um, it'll fit within the flow of the system. I, in my experience, when you start forcing the ball at the quarterback spot to somebody, um, you're asking for bad things potentially to happen. Um, that's not how we, uh, we speak with the quarterback. Uh, obviously, defenses dictate uh, at times where the ball goes, but it's not a forced situation. And uh, Drake London, the play of the rookie, uh, could you discuss his play early in the season here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously where he is with his production, I think he's done a good job of uh, – not just the mental, but the physical part of what we ask uh, to go out there and try to execute the game plan. Uh, just like everybody who's out there with the skill, guys, uh, there's a certain criteria in which we ask guys, especially mentally, to go out and perform. Um, you have to be able to be on top of that. And, and Drake's just another example of a guy who goes out and acts like a professional. Uh, there's things that we ask. He tries to execute at a high level, uh, and the ball finds him at times, and he makes plays when, the, when his number's called. And run game-wise, did it, uh, you, you get behind last week? Yeah, I mean, I think within the flow of the game, uh, situationally, uh, where things can occur, uh, sometimes there's there's different things the defense presents, uh, which we try to take advantage of. Um, but there's no set going away from something or going towards something. Uh, there's definitely a flow of the game in which things occur. Going back Is that all your scripted questions? Yeah. Okay, now we're, we're ready to go. Now we're off script. Now we're off script. <laughs> I felt like that was like, that was intense right there at that point for D-Lab. <laughs> Sure. As you've been at a young age, and that was something that you were talking about too. How do you see that play out day to day with, with Drake? Well, I do think it's the consistency, right, in which a player shows up every day for work. And with him and a number of our players, uh, regardless of age or experience in the NFL, uh, there's a certain level of standard in which we expect them to come in, understand the plan, come out here physically and execute the plan. Uh, but just ha even how you approach the meetings, the walkthroughs, um, you know, it's professional football, so there's there's definitely a level of when you come in to understand there's a responsibility in that. And I think Drake, uh, just like our other guys, uh, take that responsibility serious. And again, you hope for not just him, but other players for their production to continue to incur, because obviously that makes us a better offense. Your run game numbers so far are better than they were a year ago. Is your confidence in, in it also higher? Does, it, does that feel right? Do you feel better about it? Yeah, I mean, for me, I know, I mean, last year's last year, but in terms of the, the confidence thing, there was never a waiver, regardless of the time frame we're talking about. Um, I do think, you know, there's times in games where certain things work better than others. Uh, there's also times in the run game or pass game in which your matchups dictate things. Uh, for us right now, it's early in the season, and we're two weeks in. There's 15 more you're guaranteed. Um, so we're still... For us offensively, right, we're still going through some of the things to make sure we're putting our players in the best position as coaches, and it's no different going in this week. But do you feel better about the run game? Do you, do you feel yeah, I, I never felt, in, in my opinion, 
right, going forward. I don't look at it, did I feel worse, I didn't feel better. I mean, each week we're going out and trying to attack a defense a certain way. So in terms of wavering a confidence or feeling better, that doesn't come into my mind. It's more about how do we attack the scheme that we're playing. And if that week calls for us to do something different, then we're going to do it. Um, but we're trying to score points regardless of how we do it. That's the name of the game on the offensive side of the ball in the NFL. Um, and regardless of how you get that done, we need to get that done. Arthur was talking about, I mean, to that end, you know, starting 0-2 last year, but also starting 0-2 this year, it does feel like a different 0-2 in terms of what this offense has been able to do throughout the first two games. Is that something that you feel as well? Well, there's different pieces, right? Um, obviously, there's different skill positions. There are different offensive line positions um, from last year. But again, it's still early in the process of, of this season. Um, there's things that we have done um, this year that we've set out that have been in, that have been better. But there's things, obviously, when it comes uh, to certain things that have not allowed us to score that we need to improve on. And, and that's, the, that's the case day in, day out. Today, obviously, Thursday, you're working on a different situation than you'll work on tomorrow. And these, these situations, you know, critical or not, those are the things that we need to improve on. And right now, that's the that's the message going forward to the offense. Talked a lot about situational football over the course of the last few days, and uh, I asked Arthur this, and I'll ask you the same thing. How do you evaluate where Marcus has been over the first two games in terms of those situational, especially inside the red zone, and where does sure. he need to go? Yeah, I think when you talk about the quarterback spot, and not to be a, a not to make an excuse by any stretch, but the rea the, the realization at the quarterback is. Everybody has to do their job to get great quarterback play. And the quarterback has to do his job. And so that could be anything from assignment to alignment to when the ball snaps to execution. And so when you single out one position, to me, it's obviously in my position, it's about everybody. It's all 11 guys. So for us, moving forward offensively, it's about getting those guys in sync on the same page, making sure that we don't beat ourselves. And then we execute at the most stressful and tight situations that games will allow us to execute in. So for me, with Marcus or any other players, it's about how we actually represent ourselves as a unit and go out there and execute in those critical situations. To that end, uh, we've got a really young team. We've got uh, a bunch of guys trying to learn what it's like to play in the national football and absorbing game plans. We did, we did sure. Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think, you know, for us, what we ask our players to do um, what our mindset is from an offensive standpoint is that we want to, we do cause mental stress for those guys to push their limits. We think it gains us an advantage, not just in the formation, but the personnels. Um, we expect anybody who has a helmet up to be ready to compete and play. And we want to use all our guys the best of their ability. And so that is really the mindset, regardless of age or experience. Um, there's a certain criteria, a standard in which we want those guys to uphold. And for us, obviously, as coaches, to make sure they get to uh, and hold them to. But... Uh, we look at it as a, an opportunity for those guys to go out and highlight what they can do, but we're going to push them. We're going to push them physically. We're going to push them mentally. Um, and guys understand that and they accept it. They accept the challenge. They like the challenge. You can tell by the feedback or how they go out and practice. Um, you got to be locked in, and, uh, and guys do that, and we appreciate that as coaches. Coach, how did Wait, the... you still on script? No, we're off okay. script. Okay, we're off script. This, is, uh... this could go anywhere now. Yeah, this is okay. iCloud. iCloud. All right, here we go. Uh, Tyler Algier's uh, pro debut, how did he run the ball for you? And, and Coach yeah. mentioned his pass protection. Yeah, I think another young player that we had just mentioned about. Again, you know, we look at him as a, another piece of the puzzle to go out there and execute what was called upon. Um, you saw in college how he runs the football. I don't think he, he changed just because uh, the name on the, on the helmet changed for him. Uh, there's a certain level in which we expect him to play just like all our guys, um, and he's fit that so far. Yeah, I, I know these guys decently well. Just some of these coaches on the defensive side I've worked with before. I've got a ton of appreciation and respect uh, for Coach Hurt, Coach Desai. Um, you know, they they definitely bring a level of um, – Coach Hurt is an intense, smart football coach. And you can see that the way his defense plays. Um, I know when I was with him, I know how he went about his work habits. Um, and I appreciate him. And I know that's what he's stressing on his defense. I know Coach Desai, who was brought in there, um, I know how smart he is. I know what he is, what he's able to bring to the table. And I think it's um, for how they're going about their business, it's a very good fit. And it's going to cause 
impose a big challenge for us on Sunday.